Nowadays, we often hear a term digital nomad, but what exactly does it mean to be a digital nomad? We have brought you the best person to explain you that, a passionate entrepreneur whose dream is to make Croatia a better place for living. Mr. Jan de Jong moved from a land where many students intend to go for a better future. Hopefully he will change your opinion and doubts about being successful and still live in Croatia. Well, Mr. Jan de Jong, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Maya. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. And I would also like to thank Market Talks for, uh, for having me. Let me try to share my screen for the presentation. There we go. Can you see the presentation? I hope so. Yes, yes, we can see. All right. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Jan de Jong, 36 years old, uh, happily married to a woman from Croatia. Together we have four children. I've been living in Croatia for more than 14 years now. And uh, in the past 14 years, I've, I've done uh, several things. First of all, I've, I've been an author uh, all, this, all these years. I've started several businesses from some of them uh, became really big. Uh, I'm also generally known for being the initiator in Croatia for uh, introducing a digital nomad visa to Croatia. Uh, but let me just first of all take you a little bit with me on a, on a journey on how this all began for me coming to Croatia. Like I said, I've been here for more than 14 years, so that means that I was 22 years old when I moved to Croatia. I was here as a marketing student writing my final thesis, my Diplomski Skirat. Uh, and the subject of my Diplom Skerat was to expand a company from the Netherlands called M Plus Group to Croatia. And M Plus Group in the Netherlands was a contact center. And the founder of that contact center back in the Netherlands, uh, that man is Mato Bozic. He has Croatian roots, obviously. And that's where there is a, why there is a connection of me actually going to Croatia to expand M Plus Group. After I came uh, to Croatia in 2006, I started writing my final thesis and I started step-by-step step, uh, building this company. And after being here for about one year, we employed about 32 people. I went back to the Netherlands to, uh, to graduate, to defend my final thesis. And after graduation, um, I had a lunch with Mato, who then offered me 50% of the company on the condition that I would go back to Croatia to finish what I started. Uh, fast forward nine years later, uh, the company that we had started in 2006 uh, grew tremendously. Uh, in 2016, we employed more than 400 people. And at that moment, we also got an, um, I got an offer to, uh, to sell my shares, which was an offer that was good enough for me to accept it. And at that very moment, um, I, I, I had some mixed feelings, obviously, because I've been working in the call center business since I was 17 years old until I got an offer at the age of 31. And by accepting an offer like this, um, it, it also meant that I had to sign off on a non-compete. So that means that for the upcoming three years, I was not allowed to be working anything connected to the call center industry. So that meant that I had to completely reinvent myself, start all over again from scratch. And that's why in 2016, I wanted to start another business uh, which is again closely connected to marketing. So where with M Plus Group back in 2006, where we started the business, call center business, we were the first ones in Croatia to do something like that. And again, with Web Power Adria in 2016, we were the first company locally present in this region, specialized in providing email marketing services. So we were directly competing against softwares like MailChimp. Most people know MailChimp for sending out newsletters, but there's no local players in uh, this region that provides software as a service for sending out newsletters like that. Um, I've been, I mean, uh, Ilya already uh, mentioned it in his, uh, in his presentation, uh, the subject of content marketing. Uh, I have a huge passion for content marketing and there's another passion that I have and that is for LinkedIn. But just like probably most people that are watching here with us, uh, that are with us here today, uh, most people are using LinkedIn just by scrolling through their feed, 
uh, once in a while liking a post or engaging with some post, but they're not really creating any content. And for me, that was exactly the same uh, until um, actually uh, September 2019. Uh, I, was, I was a regular consumer of content, not producing anything. And, and this is therefore an example of my stats of that period where you can see that in, in, in a six month period from March until August 2019, I had created five posts altogether. Uh, those posts they generated about 10,000 views. Uh, engagement was not even that bad with 1.77%. And there were 149 likes on, on, on those five posts combined. Um, everything changed for me regarding how I was gonna use uh, LinkedIn um, during one business trip that I made to Ljubljana. I went together with my, uh, with my business partner, Martina Šepić from Web Power. We went to Ljubljana to meet with a couple of uh, potential clients and partners. And at the end of the working day, uh, Martina told me that she wanted to go to, uh, to one shopping mall to visit a couple of shops that, uh, that were not present in, uh, in Zagreb. So she suggested, why don't I go a little bit of shopping and you go drink a beer by yourself. And as I was sitting in that bar, drinking my beer, I was scrolling a little bit through LinkedIn and a little bit through Facebook. All of a sudden, I got a, a reminder on Facebook with this photo that you see um, that reminded me that exactly that day, 13 years ago, I actually moved from the Netherlands to Croatia. And I decided to make a screenshot of, of that image that popped up. And I wrote a small little post where I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for, for all the support that they had been giving me. Uh, thank you for, uh, for all the warm-hearted people in Croatia for really making me feel at home in Croatia. And the moment that I made that post, it just exploded. And I got so much traction with this post. Uh, as you can see, there were more than 500 likes uh, on this post. More than 61,000 people viewed this post. And just to put things in perspective, but at that moment, I had maybe one and a half thousand LinkedIn connections. So to, to see those kind of numbers on, on a, a LinkedIn profile that actually has very small number of followers uh, was, was something that I couldn't even imagine myself that this was possible. Messengers directly uh, uh, mentioned to me that as a result of this LinkedIn post, we actually received a couple of inquiries from companies that wanted to know more about our web power services. And more as a joke, Martina told me like, hey, you know, maybe you should continue to make content on LinkedIn. So I decided to do that. And then I have to admit that at that very moment, it was... Uh, very difficult uh, in terms of creating content because after you have had one, let's say, successful post, you kind of expect that the posts that are gonna be made after that, that they're also gonna have good traction and that you're gonna have good results with those posts. But unfortunately, the reality is different. Uh, it, it takes a lot of effort to, to, to build your profile and to create a lot of followers and, and to have a lot of engagements on your posts. But these are just a couple of examples of, of posts that I started making after Martina joked about me continuing to make those posts. Uh, this is a post where I was writing about um, Web Power Adria actually having more employees than MailChimp in Croatia, uh, which was a bit of a provocative post because obviously MailChimp doesn't have an office in Croatia. So just having one employee uh, in, in, in Croatia would have already make you have more employees than MailChimp has. Uh, but the results were very good at that time for, uh, for this kind of post, uh, 149 likes, more than 12,000 people saw our brand web power. So that was, that was actually very satisfying. Some other kind of post that I made was, for example, where I talk about me being a father of four children, a husband, and at the same time, an entrepreneur who runs and owns uh, several businesses. Uh, these kind of posts are also very well received by, uh, by, by my audience, uh, which you can see here also in, in, in the engagement. And another type of post that I would make is where I share more about my love of being an entrepreneur in 
Croatia, as, yeah, in, in, in this country. Uh, those posts are also getting good traction for me. After I started making more and more content, uh, these are the updated stats uh, from the following six month period. Actually, this is a five month period, September until, um, until end of uh, February. Uh, instead of having only 10,000 views on my content, I had this time more than 600,000 views on my content. Also, the number of likes increased significantly to uh, over 8,000. And this was done, this was a result of altogether 40 posts with an engagement of 1.6%, which is not even that bad. Um, then, beginning of last year, just like with everybody else, we also ended up in lockdown. And I have to say that even though we were all in self-isolation, as a result of everything that I was doing on LinkedIn, I never felt more connected with the world and, and with my audience than, uh, than before. Uh, even sitting at home, I was able to communicate with many of you uh, over LinkedIn. And uh, I started continuing to make content also during that period. And Unfortunately, in Croatia, we were not only hit with a lockdown, but right away, we were also hit with an earthquake. So I made, for example, a post where I wrote something like, stay strong, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay positive. Uh, this was for a very long time my best post uh, with more than two and a half thousand likes. It was seen by more than 100,000 people at that time. And what is good about a post like this for me is that it enables me to to rapidly grow uh, my connections and a number of followers. Another type of post that I made during this lockdown period is, uh, was actually my first buy local campaign type of post. Uh, Croatia being a country that for more than 20% of its GDP depends on tourism, meaning people coming into the country to spend their money here. If all of a sudden those revenue streams dry up, my thinking was that we need to support local businesses and if you can avoid spending money abroad on products and services that you can also be buying local, then uh, I'm, I'm in favor of, of doing that. So this is a post where I communicated something like that, that I was not going to go on a holiday abroad, but that I was actually going to go on a holiday here in Croatia to support the Croatian hospitality industry. Uh, again, very good traction, one and a half thousand. Another post that I made in that same period was about uh, those tech companies like Facebook and Twitter. They were all kind of showing off with, with announcements that from now on, all of their employees were allowed to work from home indefinitely. So I made a post where I said, breaking news, tech giants, Facebook, Twitter, and WebPower Adria, who employed six people at that time, uh, would allow their staff to work from home indefinitely. Around the same time that we all had to go into lockdown, I was asked to participate in a virtual conference called Tourism 5.0. And during that conference, I was going to get the question out of all questions, which was, what can we do as a country to turn Croatia into a year-round tourism destination? And I had to admit to myself that I, I have zero experience working in tourism. I've never done anything connected to tourism. So what I did is I called up a very good friend of mine, Paul Bradbury, the owner of uh, the, the Total Creation News media outlet. And because he writes a lot about tourism and I asked him if he could send me some articles that I could read up the day before the virtual event was gonna start uh, so that I could perhaps even say something smart during that virtual conference. And as I was reading those articles until late in the evening, uh, all of a sudden my eyes fell on three words, which were digital nomad tourism. And I mentioned that during the conference that I think that this is for us the way to turn Croatia into a year round destination. I was giving all the arguments why I thought so. And the same evening that got also covered on the, on the evening news, on, uh, on Hart One, on uh, Nefnik. And after that, I started on my LinkedIn profile promoting Croatia as a country to be a perfect destination for digital nomads to come here, live here, and to work from here. And 
the post that you see here is actually still until today, the post with the highest engagement that I've ever had. Uh, it had more than 300,000 views, 5,600 uh, likes, engagements uh, with this post. After that, I continued promoting Croatia. Uh, every time that I would make a post about digital nomad tourism connected to this country, it would just blow up and, and, and really go viral. And then one Saturday morning, I woke up very early and I decided that I wanted to write an open letter on LinkedIn to our prime minister, Mr. Plenkovic, in which I wanted to ask him if he would be so kind to consider introducing a digital nomad visa in Croatia. And that post looks like this. Again, with a lot of support from the LinkedIn community, we got more than 200,000 views on this post. Uh, again, more than 5,000 people liked this post, and I believe that almost 250 times this post was shared by the audience. And a couple of weeks later, after I made this post, I was asked by the Prime Minister's offer, office uh, if I could send an email to him directly, uh, in which I would further elaborate my ideas and my thoughts on, on why I think that Croatia should introduce a digital nomad visa. Very soon after that, I actually got a phone call from uh, Ministry of Interior, MOOP, and they invited me to come over for a meeting for me to pitch the idea of introducing this visa. Uh, first of all, MOOP right away understood how big of an opportunity this was for this country. And secondly, they also told me during that meeting that they were just about to make some changes to the Alien Act, to the Foreigners Act, and that this would probably be the right time to tag along with additional legislation that would allow digital nomads to be in Croatia maximum 12 months. What is also a great side effect from, from everything that I was doing on, on LinkedIn, I noticed also that several journalists are following my content and whatever they see that, that I'm posting something that is what they believe a great story for, for their media, uh, they, uh, they call me up, they ask me for, um, for an interview, uh, or they send me emails with, with questions. Uh, I send them my answers and, uh, and, and, and some photos. And all of a sudden, I'm going from LinkedIn into the mainstream media. And what I also did is because of the great support that I, that I got from day one about this digital nomad visa in Croatia, I decided that I wanted to be very transparent towards my entire audience on every step of the way that we were gonna follow in order to get this visa in Croatia. So for example, when I got the, the phone call and invitation to meet with, um, with Moop, I shared that on LinkedIn. After that, I also kept everybody up to date on what was actually happening during those meetings. Uh, and here is another post where I shared that we had a great meeting with uh, State Secretary of Interior, Ms. Gras, uh, and that we are really moving forward and working hard on introducing this digital nomad visa. 44 days after my open letter uh, to Prime Minister Plankovic, uh, I also had an opportunity to meet with the Prime Minister. And he told me during that meeting that he believes that this is where the world is going to, that more and more people will start working fully remote and that more and more companies are gonna support uh, the idea of having their staff working fully remote. And he believed that we should be among the first countries in the world to start welcoming digital nomads to come to Croatia by regulating their stay. Um, there was a photo taken, uh, he made a tweet on, on, on his uh, Twitter profile, and of course, very proudly, I also shared it on my LinkedIn with my audience that, once again, the Prime Minister is supporting this idea, also together with his cabinet. Uh, during the meeting, he showed me a piece of paper with the proposed changes to the Alien Act that they wanted to add to the Alien Act, and we were moving forward. Uh, before I go further on the buy local campaign, I'm very happy and proud to share that uh, as of January 1st, we are among the first 10 countries in the world that actually offers a staying permit to digital nomads. Digital nomads can stay in Croatia up to one year. And we have also made changes to the tax law. 
meaning that digital nomads will not be charged any income tax during their stay in Croatia uh, in order to avoid double taxation. So the idea is that they pay taxes in the country where, for example, they have their businesses registered or where they are actually tax residents. Uh, the last figure that I heard from yesterday from the Ministry of Interior is that we have 18 applications received. And so far, we have uh, five digital nomads that have officially received their approval for their staying permit. And I personally believe that um, many thousands over the years are going to follow into the footsteps of the first 18 digital nomads that have applied and that this can become a multi-billion kuna industry for Croatia, helping us to turn this country into a year-round destination. Regarding the buy local campaign, um, I already made a post prior in the, in the, in the past uh, where I sat and, and gave my support to be supporting local businesses, not going for a holiday abroad, but that I was actually going to support the the, the, the local hospitality industry by staying for my holidays in Croatia. Uh, at one point of time, I also started a, a buy local campaign that for every 25 companies that would switch from services like MailChimp to Web Power, that I was going to hire one full time employee in our Zagreb office. And this campaign got a lot of traction. Again, it was covered by some journalists in the mainstream media. Uh, and as a result of this campaign, we actually were able to onboard 50 new clients in the middle of a pandemic, opening up two new positions in our company, which I shared in this post, including the, the links where people could apply. Um, what is also really great is that uh, because of, uh, of, of having a great network on LinkedIn, uh, I, there was no need for me to advertise on, on web portals like Moi Posao or Posao uh, We got on this one LinkedIn post, almost 100 applications from, from people that wanted to, to start working for Web Power. And after we actually hired our two new colleagues, uh, Lucia and Anna, I again transparently shared with everybody that we close the whole circle. So I make a promise on LinkedIn that for every 25 companies, we're going to hire one person. We got 50 clients, we're opening up two positions, and now we have two new colleagues. We're closing the circle. And this was altogether a phenomenal campaign uh, for which LinkedIn was the, the, the main media that was being used to do all this. Then if we have another look at some of the statistics that, you, that, we, that I had between March and end of September of last year, you see that the numbers just keep on increasing. Uh, altogether, I had in that, uh, seven month period, I had more than 5.2 million views of my posts, 111,000 likes, very high engagement rate of 2.34%. Everything above 2% is considered to be excellent. And this was done altogether on 176 posts. Uh, over the entire year, last year, I had uh, more than 7.8 million views on my post, which is more than many websites would have in Croatia. Another side effect from, from everything that is happening, the personal branding and, and, and being very active with content marketing on LinkedIn is that I'm obviously, just like today, being invited to, uh, to, to speak at events and uh, also to appear on, the, on, on TV shows like Druga Strana. I've, I think I've participated in three or four different HRT shows. Uh, I had a film crew coming over to my house to, to do a small documentary for the U.S. market, actually for the, for the diaspora, uh, presentations at wonderful events like, uh, like Leap Summit, uh, did a TEDx talk. So it, there, there's a lot of things happening outside of LinkedIn, but all things started with LinkedIn. So if I, if I can just sum up what LinkedIn has been able to to give me, to do for me, is it, it generated millions of views. I've been able to double up my web power business. Uh, I've been able to introduce the, the idea of, of, of digital nomad visa in Croatia, and it helped me to actually change two laws. Uh, one is the Foreigners Act, the Alien Act, and the other one is the tax 
Uh, I've been able to recruit two. Um, I've been at several speaking events, a lot of media attention, and I've had a chance to meet with top executives at the largest companies in this country, uh, all as a result of content marketing on LinkedIn. So what, what I would like to do now is, is just to share um, some of the insight that, I, that I've learned myself over the past year and to give you uh, perhaps some tips and tricks on, on if, if this is a direction that you would want to take uh, on, on how you could do that. The first thing I would say is um, define your target audience. So who do you want to address with your content? Uh, if I would have to answer that question for me, uh, for myself, I'm not necessarily interested in creating content that would be enjoyed by the whole world. Uh, the content that I'm producing is very much focused and targeted on the audience in Croatia and in this region. So define for yourself very well, who do you want to address? That doesn't even have to be geographic. That can also be, uh, for example, uh, certain professions that you want to, uh, want to address. What is it that you would like to accomplish with the posts that you make? Are you interested in inspiring people, educating people, motivating people? Uh, do you just want to meet like-minded people? What is it that you want to do? Do you want to do business development uh, through LinkedIn? Define for yourself very well what is the desired outcome of your content marketing on LinkedIn. In my opinion, there are three types of content. The first type of content is content that you create uh, that, that from which you know that the audience will enjoy reading it. I mean, we have to understand one thing. You're never making content for yourself. If you're making content for yourself, then you can just might as well write it down on an A4 and stick it on your own wall in your house. The, con the content that you are producing is there to be shared with your audience. So you always have to bear in mind what your audience wants also. Uh, so the type number one is content that your audience wants to read. I'm gonna give you some examples later on. Uh, the second type of content includes messages from which you want that your audience reads it. And the perfect post in my opinion is the one where you are combining the type number one and type number two. So to make a post that your audience will enjoy reading, but it includes messages that you want that your audience reads about you. And here are some examples. So right when we entered into the lockdown period, uh, the business owners, entrepreneurs, they were very scared that uh, they were not going to get the very much needed support from the government. So I made a post uh, saying Ugyebistan is bankrupt stop protecting the public sector, save the private sector, because it, at the end, it's the private sector that needs to pay for everything. So it needed to be saved uh, during, the, during the lockdown period. Now, as you can see, this is a type of content that my audience obviously enjoys reading because they gave it almost two and a half thousand likes. This is the second type of content. This is a, a, a post where I include or where I fully focus on a message that I want my audience to read. So here in this case, I communicated that Web Power Adria was gonna prolong our campaign, our buy local campaign, so that for every 25 companies that would switch to Web Power, that we were gonna hire one full-time employee. That's what I shared in this post. And as you can see, people still appreciate it, but not as much as post type number one. It had almost, only one tenth of the number of likes compared to the previous one, 250 likes. The perfect post is a type of post where you once again share a message from which you know that the audience wants to read it. And secondly, it includes your message that you want that your audience reads. So here I have stop buying Spanish strawberries, Italian tomatoes and US software if you can buy local. I'm again asking everybody to be considerate and to, to support local companies. So by buying local, and here in this same email, in the same post, I mentioned that Web Power Adria has one main competitor, which is MailChimp, which is one of the largest tech companies in the world. 
and that we are basically asking people to contact us so to switch to web power and to support a local business now this is this is the perfect kind of post where you get the number of views that you want to have and the, and the type of engagement on a post where you are actually able to share your key message when to post finished Maya uh, yes I'm very sorry to tell you that you're running out of time Maya I see uh, I'm very tall. my time sorry. is up yes yes <laughs> okay all right um, should I then leave it here uh, yes we are we are very sorry we need to move on with our program okay all right then, uh, I mean I was almost finished so uh, this was it uh, we also experienced an audio error. Are still connected? A few. Yes, we are. Um, we also experienced an audio error a few times, so we apologize for the inconvenience. Okay. Uh, and um, for you, Mr. Yan De Jong, thank uh, you well, uh, Hwala, and uh, thank you, thank you uh, very for much. your experience with us. Uh, thank you for the tips and tricks. The presentation was very, very interesting and hopefully very inspiring for our guests. And uh, thank you once again for your time. Thank you for having me.